Hi, and welcome to another video. I would like to continue on the last video about isolates and maybe dive a little bit deeper because of the common misconception that I'm seeing and that I'm hearing a lot, um, which is basically that isolates are threats. So here is some article I found and this article states over here that an isolate is a thread that has an event loop and whatever. But basically at the beginning it says that an isolate is a thread. And then later it states also that Dart can execute multiple threads by spawning additional isolates. This is partially true because when spawning additional isolates new threads can be spawned, but as you will see later this is also not entirely true. Here is another article. In this article we can read that at the point when the Dart starts there will be one mine thread, isolate thread, which is basically treated again like it would be the same thing. Then if we keep reading you can see that it's said over here that isolates are Dart's version of threads. And unfortunately, this sentence is also not true. Isolates and threads are two different concepts. Let's be back over here to the Dart website with the concurrency in Dart page. And let's scroll down to the isolates themselves. Here we go. So we have the section how isolates work. And here they explain a couple of important things. So first of all, that in modern devices, we have multiple cores in the CPUs. And to take advantage of that, we tend to use threads. And then these threads have shared memory. And this is something we don't have in Dart. Instead in Dart, we have the isolates. The difference between having like threads in Java, for example, and having the isolates in Dart is that the isolates do not share memory, while threads can share memory. And this decision was made by the Dart team, as I presume it was made and partially explained over here, in order to avoid uh, shared state concurrency issues, like for example, one of the problems with that is the racing condition. And here over the link, you have an explanation of what racing condition is. Follow me here right now. Let's say we have two threads that are sharing a memory. In the memory, we have an integer value. First thread in an ideal scenario, first reads the value, increases it by one, and then writes it back to memory and we have one. Then a second thread comes, it reads a value, it's one, it increases it and it writes back to memory as two. But this scenario can look also differently. Here in the second scenario, these two threads are still working in parallel, so at the same time. And then first thread comes, reads the value at zero, second thread comes, reads the value at zero, then both of them are increasing them and then both of them are writing back the value. But because both of them read zero from the memory, shared memory, then they both increased by one the zero value and both of them wrote back one. And this is what's called racing condition. This is one of the problem with having multiple threads and sharing memory. So being back to the decision that was made by the Dart team, in Dart we cannot do it. So we don't have threads which can share memory, we have isolates which are isolated as the name suggests, and then these isolates have their own memory. And if you ever use the isolates then you know in order to communicate between two of them, you have to use the ports API. This makes our Dart code a lot simpler than it would be, than for example a Java code is. So finally, with these constructs, we can still use the advantages of having multiple cores in our CPUs. So we will be able to have under the hood multiple threads running the jobs in parallel with using isolates. So the next important thing over here to mention is that every application in Dart is always running within an isolate. So there's always this mine isolate, which is starting, for example, running the mine function, and then it has its event loop and it expects events. And once it's done executing all events, then it's exiting. Here for a moment, we can also talk about the event loop as they explain over here. So an event loop is basically a first in, first out kind of a queue. So every event that comes into the loop, then it will be outputted in the same order as it comes in. So for example, if you can see over here, first we had this repaint event that came, so it was then outputted and executed first. Then we have the tap, repaint, repaint. So as they come in, the first that came in, the first will be executed. Another thing that we would have to talk about is what happened in Dart 2.15. And for that, I have opened here the article about announcing Dart 2.15 and the changes to how isolate was, were treated. Before Dart 2.15 came into the picture, Every time you had an isolate, the isolate would have its own heap, its own memory where it would store all of the objects and other stuff in your application. So if we scroll down a little bit in this section, this paragraph, we read that. We started redesigning and re-implementing how isolates work. 
Introducing a new concept called isolates group. Isolates in an isolate group share various internal data structure representing the running program. Before Dart 215, each isolate would have its own heap. And now we have groups of isolates and these isolates are sharing a heap. We will see that later on a certain picture. Because of that they were able to speed up the times a lot, so it is now more than 100 times faster to start an additional isolate and also spawned isolates consume between 10 to 100 times less memory. And this is because there is just one structure in the memory for a couple of isolates that they are all referring to. But don't confuse concepts over here. The data still needs to be passed between isolates through the ports. You cannot still not access the same variable from two different isolates. It's just that under the hood, both of the isolates use the same piece of a memory where they store their objects and so on. And thanks to that, objects that would be otherwise copied over from one heap to another, when for example one isolate finished and returns its result, now don't have to be copied to a different structure, to a different place in memory. Now let's go to the juicy stuff and now let's look why these articles I've shown you before are wrong in claiming that isolates are the same thing as threads. Here is a brilliant article I found, Introduction to the Dart VM. This article takes care of many different concepts and explains a lot of things how the Dart VM works. And I highly recommend you to go into the description of this video and click on it and read it all if you're interested in how the Dart VM works and also what Dart VM is. But we will only take a piece of it about threads and isolates. This article was written by this guy over here. I will not try to pronounce his name over here and <laughs> not to disrespect him, but just by studying this article that he wrote, he must be a really good guy to talk if you want to deal with the Dart VM in the future. Anyways, let's scroll down and at the beginning let's skip just maybe the first couple of uh, sentences over here because he's just explaining what this article will help you with, things like that. And let's move to the section how does Dart VM run your code. So first of all, there are a couple of different ways to execute the code, but again, this is out of the scope of this video. We can look at, at it another time. What interests us is first of all this picture. So I mentioned the changes in Dart 2.15 and now you can see how it works. For example, over here we have an isolate group and then within this isolate group we have some garbage collector managed heap right here and we have also some isolates. So this is an isolate and isolate can have an associated mutator thread with it and also some global things like that. And also within the um, isolate group there is like a bunch of helper threads. We will see into that in a moment. And then you can have another isolate group over here and the important thing is that the two groups cannot directly communicate. So we do not share memory between the two groups. And that means both the memory that we use to access the values within our code, but also the actual GC managed heap, so the garbage collector managed heap. However, there is also this VM isolate up here, which has another heap. And as you can see, these two heaps have reference to it. So actually, there is some kind of a shared memory, shared heap between the two because both of them can access this heap. However, you can see over here explained that this is a pseudo isolate for shared immutable objects like null, true and false. All right, so this is how the isolate structure looks like currently in Dart. Now let's continue with the article because there are some very interesting things written down here. First of all, any Dart code within the VM is running within some isolate as we know already. And then he explains over here that this is basically like an isolated Dart universe completely. So it's some universe, it doesn't know anything about the other universes in theory at least. It has its own global state and here is a keyword, usually with its own thread, so-called a mutator thread, as you can see over here, this is the mutator thread. But the keyword over here is usually. Let's keep reading. Isolates are grouped together into isolate groups. So this is again something we already know, we've seen this is coming from Dart 215. Isolate within the group shared the same garbage collector managed heap. And this is again what we see over here. So we have this garbage collector managed heap over here and this is shared for all of the isolates, making them faster than if they would have their own heaps. So this heap is then used for storage of objects allocated by an isolate. And then we can read over here that the heap sharing within the group is an implementation detail. So as a developer, you don't actually deal with it. This is all done under the hood for you. 
and then next sentence, even isolates within the same group cannot share any mutable state, which we've seen already before. We cannot, we have to use these ports over here, the ports API, to send and receive data between isolates. Then the next sentence is also important. So we can use this isolate the span method, as we've seen in my last video, and this will spawn a new isolate within the same group. But we also have this isolate the spawn URI which will spawn an isolate within a new group. So this isolate group over here will have one isolate and you can spawn another isolate with the URI method. It will create another isolate group and then in this isolate you can create another isolate that will sit in this isolate with the spawn method. I know it's confusing. <laughs> By the way, in Flutter we do not have access to this isolate the spawn URI method, so we only can spawn isolates within one group. Then the relationship between OS threads and isolates is a bit blurry and highly dependent on how VM is embedded into application. But there are some things that are guaranteed. First of all, he's mentioning over here that an OS thread can enter only one isolate at a time. And this should give us another hint after this usually keyword. There is a thread and this thread can enter an isolate and execute code. Then it can leave this isolate and go somewhere else. So you already can see that isolate is not a thread. It has to leave the current isolate if it wants to enter another isolate. So here you have my confirmation of my words that it can actually go to another isolate. There can be only a single mutator thread associated with an isolate at a time. Mutator thread is a thread that executes Dart code. So this thread over here, there can only be one thread at the moment executing Dart code in an isolate. So this is why the code in isolate is actually synchronous. However, as we will see in a moment, this is even not that easy as there would be just one thread executing our code within this isolate actually. So the next sentence here is very important. However, the same OS thread can first enter one isolate, execute Dart code, then can leave the isolate and enter another isolate. Alternatively, many different OS threads can enter an isolate and execute the Dart code in it, just not at the same time. Except of the single mutator thread that is currently executing some code in isolate, which can be only one at the moment, we can have also a couple multiple threads related with the isolate. Like for example, a background uh, just-in-time compiler thread. So for example, when you're running the debug version or with hot reload and whatever, then we have the GIT running over there. But also concurrent garbage collector marker thread. So another thread would be marking what can be garbage collected. And also another thread that at the same time can exist and can do actually the swiping of the memory. So it's again related to the garbage collector. Okay, last paragraph that we have to read and we will be done with this topic. Internally, Virtual machine, also virtual machine is quite a big word over here, what happens in Dart. Again, a topic for another video, but it's also mentioned in this article, so please read it. Internally, virtual machine uses a thread pool. If you are a Java developer originally, or probably any, many other threading languages, then the idea of thread pools may be already familiar to you. And this is also how it's realized that different threads actually can come in to isolate and execute some piece of a code and then leave and another comes. This is because underneath there is actually a thread pool. And a thread pool, we can have a look over here. All right, so here let's have a look just at this picture without reading the text. So you can see that we have some queue of tasks over here and these tasks are to be executed. And so when a task comes, then it comes to this thread pool over here. A thread pool is basically like a array of threads. And when a new task is coming over here, then the thread pool will look whether some of the threads within it is currently idle, so it's not doing anything. And then this thread pool can assign this thread to execute a certain task. And now in case of our Dart slash Flutter programs, let's say that this task is actually an event coming to an event loop. And let's say this is on tap event or repaint event, whatever. So what happens underneath is when this event occurs, it doesn't actually necessarily run on the same thread every time, but it may come to this thread pool. And if this thread pool will have another idle thread, it can assign it another thread to actually execute this task. The very nice thing uh, that this guy over here done is that he linked a lot of sources. So if you're interested into the details and you don't trust him and right now me repeating his words, then you can go to the source and this is a lot of C code over here. You can read how actually the thread pools and so on are implemented.
Here we can read that internally the virtual machine uses a thread pool, as we've seen, to manage the OS threads. The threads and the code is structured around the task concept rather than around a concept of OS threads. For example, instead of spawning a dedicated thread to perform a background sweeping for the GC, the virtual machine is actually creating this concurrent swiper task over here. And then it pushes it to the virtual machine, to the thread pool, and the thread pool implementation either selects an idling thread or spawns a new thread if there are no available threads that would be idle. And then similarly, we have the default implementation of an event loop for an isolate message. And now look what happens over here. The event loop in an isolate is actually creating, posting, creating and posting a task. If you have a look over here, then this task is also just an implementation or extension of the thread pool task. And again, similarly like with this task and any other, the event, the message handler task that holds an event to execute, for example, a piece of Dart code on top or whatever in your Flutter application, it will be sent to the thread pool and the thread pool will select on what thread this task will be actually executed. So this concludes finally that unfortunately for all these articles and uh, what many people told me in past, isolates do not equal threads, they are not threads, and they do not contain a single thread that would execute the code. With that, like this video, subscribe, and I'll code you to death, and i see you the next time. Bye-bye.